Wednesday. And I'm gonna start the day by gonna go watch a movie. So I'm gonna watch Papillon, which I think is a remake of an old prison movie. Uh, and it's got the guy from Sons of Anarchy and uh, Pacific Rim. I can't remember his name, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Just finished the movie and I'm on my way to go have lunch with uh, Dave. Somebody driving down the wrong lane. <laughs> Traffic seems to be all backed up on the way to Pretoria, so now I have to find another route to Bedford View. Earlier this year when I went to New York, um, I finally got to go to, I think it's Katzi's Diner, and uh, they make these delicious um, pastrami mustard sandwiches. And I mean, I'd heard about them, everyone recommended that I go there. I saw this meat and it like looked delicious, but very pink for me. And uh, you know, these they have these cutters, and they slice up some meat for you quickly and they like gave me a taste and it was the most outrageous thing I've ever tasted and you can go now and buy some pastrami somewhere and it's okay it's certainly edible but it's just nothing like Katsy's and uh, I highly recommend if you go to New York got to go to Katsy's uh, probably one of the nicest things I've ever eaten while I've traveled What I would talk about this evening is um, getting your CV to somebody like me who runs um, a design team and understanding what it is to kind of get my attention, get an interview, and given that I've worked in a huge corporate environment. So just so that you understand, you get so busy being the guy kind of overseeing everything in the design team that it's, you've almost got to allocate time to re review CVs. CVs come to us through our approved 
vendors and basically they are either consultancies or recruiters that are submitting um, people's CVs to us. When we go through them, we would know that we need some to fill some positions, but we wouldn't know exactly where people are going to go. Um, we, we never hiring specifically for a project of a certain skill. It's very rare. It does happen on occasion. Sometimes you need a very specific person to handle a very specific need. Something like chat is a very specific need when you're looking for a writer. You know, somebody who can do conversational design and things like that. Very different thing. But for the most part, UXs and UIs would come through these consultancies or these recruiters. They would send us CVs. We would sit down, dedicate some time because it's the only way I would get it. You, you just can't randomly send me CVs. It'll just get lost in my inbox. So basically we would then sit there and I would just scan, scan through things. I don't necessarily care so much about how well it is designed. I always heard these stories of these great, uh, you know, companies that had hired people where people had gone out of their way to make the most creative uh, CV ever. Truthfully, not going to work with somebody like me because I simply don't have the time to sit and appreciate that. What I'm looking for in a CV is who are you? What is your history? What are your skills? Where did you study? And you know what um, experience you have and you know there's little things that have to be there though so I go through that review I do also very much recommend even if you're a UXer sending me some sort of PDF document that's got um, examples of the projects that you've worked on whether they be wireframes whether they be screens of the finished product and, and you know you can always put in that that document the PDF document what your contribution was to the project because if you've worked on, on huge projects you only work on a piece of a bigger kind of picture and so you, you've got to um, be clear on what did you do how did you solve a problem that's what I want to know I want to know that sort of stuff so I don't like to review designers who don't send me uh, portfolios but a portfolio doesn't have to be attached as a PDF. It could, it could be a link to your website. Um, and then it could be um, a link to like Behance or something. There are some special, like specialist people and very senior people, and they wouldn't have portfolios, and I wouldn't expect that. Um, but if you're a junior and you, like you're in your like Anyway, from a, a, a junior, mid or senior designer, you'd better send me some sort of portfolio. Otherwise, I actually won't even consider you. But okay, you pass that test. I looked at your, your portfolio. I think you're good enough. Your CV tells me enough that I get to know who you are and the whole thing. Vetting you as a candidate is the job of the recruiter or the consultancy. I'm not gonna go and do background checks and all that stuff. I do look for agencies that I know and given my experience, I know pretty much most of the big agencies, most of the big companies. I know the people who were leading these teams and who a lot of the big names in the industry are. So I look for things like that. Those are very important things to put in there. The kind of the only other thing that I would kind of say at this stage is put in the type of skills you have. I do look for what sort of software you're working on, what sort of systems you've worked with, uh, things like that. I don't care to know like, oh, you do Word, Excel, whatever. I mean, that's just silly. It, it's, I've, I've never studied any of those programs. I don't care for any of those programs. I do not believe in PowerPoint. Like I'm not a fan. So that stuff doesn't wow me. What wows me is going, you're on the cutting edge of um, the latest and greatest tools that are out there that you can do your work with and that you're using the type of tools we use, things like Sketch, Envision, uh, stuff like that. So you've got to be able to, to do that. And then if you have certain leadership skills, whatever, of course, that's that's great to put there. But you know, generally speaking, when you reach a certain kind of point in your career, it's an expectation that the responsibilities you had 
were there. So that comes more down in, into mm. your experience where I would then evaluate from there. I mean, my personal CV really has my experience, some details about me and some references. Um, I don't see a, a reason to put in skills. I've never studied, so there's no reason to put my education. Um, I would encourage people to study. I actually do believe in it. I do believe that it's a good foundation. Unless you've gone and you've got an amazing like uh, work experience where you've worked at some top agencies with some top talent, I would say it's probably a good idea to, to get a good education behind you. Um, just so you know, a weekend course in uh, design thinking, not gonna cut it with me. So you've definitely got to have studied for a good amount of time to have the fundamentals of design behind you. The next thing that I'd like to talk about is the actual interview. Given how limited my time is, I do go and accommodate people. So I'm very flexible on, hey, you want to be at seven in the morning? It's okay. I'm at work at six in the morning, so it's fine. It's a good time to meet me, less distractions because people are just coming to work. So we can grab a coffee first thing in the morning, we can have a good chat. I would always say, you know, be on time. I do not like latecomers. Latecomers rarely ever get a second interview, uh, you know, or, or reschedule on the interview. It, it, does, it, it doesn't crack it. Uh, most corporates struggle with parking and things like that, so anticipate that and get there a little bit earlier. I would have no problem having an earlier meeting. I don't like a later meeting because my day is scheduled beyond uh, those meetings. The next thing is that uh, I will have gone through your LinkedIn profile as part of going through your CV initially. So just make sure that that's polished and up to date because sometimes if I don't have the CV in front of me, I will go look for your profile on LinkedIn. I would have more than likely added you as a connection on LinkedIn if I was interested in you in the first place. So more than likely I'll find you and I would be looking at that. Failing that though, which I highly, I would highly recommend that you use LinkedIn. It's a phenomenal tool for, for networking in, in your career. The other thing that should be on, on uh, your CV is a nice photograph that's very clear on your face. I want something clear. Like I would literally down to like your ID photo if need be needs to be on there so that it, when I walk to the reception, uh, I can spot you in amongst everybody and we can, we can uh, get you through security and into that interview. The other thing is, have your phone number. Just in case it's so busy, I don't recognize you somehow, I need to be able to call you. And uh, I would say that you always ask whoever sets up the meeting for my details so that you can message me if you are going to be late. I always just say, you know, try and be as upbeat as possible. Your energy is really important to me. Uh, you should certainly know that I'm looking to see how we get along. My kind of belief is that you've got to surround yourself with people that you enjoy and that you enjoy, you thrive on the energy and the whole thing. And then certainly smarter people, surround yourself with smarter people, but you can't always have smart people. So I think you just got to find people that you just get along with. You know, there's, I've met some people who just, their vibe, I didn't need to know anything else about them. I didn't even remember their CV because I never had time to go to my desk and print out their CV or anything like that. And I literally, I just love their energy so much that I'm like, this is somebody that if I had to spend eight hours a day with them, it's gonna be pretty cool and we're gonna have a lot of fun. So just put on a happy face, whatever's going on in your life, put it aside, be in a good space, come there, vibe with me, like put your best foot forward. Now listen, I get it, I'm an introvert myself. I'm socially very awkward, but I would just say, figure out a way to talk to me, figure out a way to put your best foot forward and just put a smile on your face, you know, just be warm and friendly and joke and, and the whole thing. Um, yeah, uh, just a, one more little, little like pro tip uh, for anybody who's ever gonna interview is don't run your current or previous companies down. We all know what goes on in the industry and it's okay, you don't have to explain that. I never ask people to elaborate on things that I've experienced myself or anything like that. but. 
I would say don't sit and slate the company you work for, the people you work for, the previous companies you work for. It's a very, very poor reflection of who you are. Something I like to do around the home is I like to put flowers uh, around my home all the time. And uh, it's not something I'd ever really done for myself before, but I've started doing it uh, just to keep the romance in my life. It doesn't matter if I do or don't have somebody in my life. I think uh, keeping romance in the home is quite a healthy thing to do. Quick, uh, some pro tips on how to keep those flowers around for a little bit longer is definitely cut the bottoms of of the of the flowers uh, i think like every day if you could but i mean i, I start off taking off the ends like this so. now some water some plant food get in your flowers okay how pretty that looks. I think changing out the water regularly is another good tip. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like, leave a comment and stay cool.